All right, so now we're going to um, have uh, introduced some sort of informal notion of stability. Um, so the essential idea behind stability, um, sort of a loose definition, as so I will we'll make this more precise in a little bit. is that an algorithm is said to be stable right if uh, whenever there are small changes in the input there is a correspondingly small change in the output. Um, so examples of this might be that if you have some sort of initial error, which I denote by E0, and uh, the error after n steps or operations is denoted by En, then a method might be said to be stable, right, if the absolute uh, error En looks something like n times uh, E zero, so that's sort of a linear growth. Um, and then it might be unstable if the error at the end stage looks like some kappa to the n times E zero. That's sort of exponential growth. So more generally, it's like if you had some sort of polynomial growth, it's like uh, that's considered fairly reasonable, right? But you really don't want to have the situation where you have this exponential growth uh, in the error. Okay, and then as an example, it's like we, which we discussed before, uh, floating point arithmetic uh, is stable. So what this discussion sort of uh, alludes to, if you will, is that we would like to have some sort of systematic way of um, representing this idea of growth of a certain quantity, right? So, so that naturally leads to uh, what is called the big O notation, uh, which is oftentimes used to compare rates of growth of different things, okay? And uh, so let me try to be a bit precise here and then uh, conclude with an example so that you have a sense as to what is going on. Okay, so this is big O notation. Okay, so the definition is as follows. Let's suppose that uh, we have some function g of h, which has a limit as h goes to 0, which is 0. Okay, so it goes to 0 as h goes to 0. And we have uh, another function f of h, such that the limit as h goes to 0 of this is l. Okay, so if there exists positive constant k such that the difference between f of h and l is less than equal to uh, k times the absolute value of g of h for a sufficiently small h
then we say that, or we write that um, fh is equal to L plus something which is big O of g of h. Okay, and this g of h is the rate of convergence. So the idea is that you know you have some f of h which limits to l, okay, as h goes to zero, but you want to get some sense as to how fast it's converging to l, all right? And what uh, you know it's like this does is to say that well you have this g of h which is going to zero, okay, and so you know you know that the limit of f of h is l, and so you can ask whether or not you can compare the rate at which f of h approximates l or f of h limits to L, right, is bounded by some multiple of the decay rate, it's like of this other function, g of h, and if you can, then, you know, it's like this g of h uh, is a way of characterizing the rate of convergence at the rate at which this f of h goes to L, okay? So this is what is called uh, a big O notation. And um, so let's look at an example of this, okay? Um, Let me maybe um, write down the essence of the results. So we have limit as h goes to zero of g of h is equal to zero with the limit as h goes to zero of f of h is L, all right? So if there exists a k greater than zero such that uh, for all h less than some h bar say that um, f of h minus l in absolute value is bounded from above by k times g of h, then we say that um, f h is equal to l plus big O of g of h, all right? So that's more or less, it's like what we had seen just now. Okay, so let's look at uh, applying this idea of the big O notation to an example. So from calculus we know that uh, that the limit as h goes to zero of sine of h over h is one and you can ask how fast does sine of h over h converge to one? So the question is how fast uh, does sine h over h reach one? Okay, so what you can do of course is you can do some sort of Taylor expansion for sine of h, right? So you can do a Taylor series sine of h, and that's approximately equal to h minus h cubed over 6 cosine of some unknown point c. All right, so this is actually, that's not approximate, that's equal, right? So I'm using the Taylor remainder term for some c. So we know that sine of h minus 1 over, oh, sorry, sine of h over h minus 1 Right, so I'm, I'm doing this, f of h minus the limit, right? I'm going to try to establish a bound, okay? So that's equal to sine of h minus h over h. Then I can substitute the uh, Taylor uh, expansion. It's like with the remainder term, so that's actually an equality, right? So that's equal to h squared over 6 cosine c, all right. But you know that uh, cosine is less than one. So this implies that sine h over h minus one is less than equal to one sixth h squared. 
right? So you can think of k, so k is 1, 6 here, and then h squared is what I call g of h. g of h is h squared. So we can say that sine h over h is equal to 1 plus big O of h squared. Okay, again, k is 1 over 6, and then g of h is h squared, and then the rate of convergence is big O of h squared. So what's going to happen, it's I guess we uh, proceed to this class is that you'll, uh, you'll keep seeing numerical algorithms where there's some discretization parameter, uh, like a step size of some sorts or mesh size. And that step size or mesh size is small and you want to see well, and the argument basically is that as you make that smaller and smaller, you get the closer and closer to the right answer. But it's not enough that you converge to the right answer. You would like to know how fast you converge to the right answer as you change uh, this discretization parameter. Okay? And so the study of these kind of rates of convergence are uh, important because it allows you to compare between different numerical methods. And usually what happens is that if you have a method which converges faster, that's oftentimes more desirable as long as uh, it doesn't cost much more in order to achieve that higher rate of convergence, right? But all else being equal, right, most of the time you would prefer a method which would converge faster, okay? So this is again a concept, this big O notation is a concept which we're going to be uh, using again and again, all right? But that's uh, sort of the formal definition which we have here. So let me just stop here for now.